Hello, welcome. In this video, I will discuss how to generate object code and object program for the given SIC XC program. In the university exam, this question is asked majority of the time. In this case, we have been given a program along with the for each of code, we have given a unique mnemonic code. To solve this problem, First, we need to calculate object code and then we need to generate the object program. To generate the object code, first we will try to calculate the location counter for each and every instruction. So, before calculating the location counter, first let us understand what instruction format is. The instruction format in SIC consists of four different formats. Format 1, 2, 3 and 4. Each format is used to represent different types of instruction. Let's explore them one by one. First, we have Format 1. This format is the simplest and it is used for the instruction that don't require any operands. The format consists of single opcode and which is an 8-bit field. No additional bytes are needed for format 1 instruction. Moving on to the format 2 instruction. This format is used for the instruction that require either one register as an operand or both register as operands. So the format consists of 8-bit opcode and 4-bit register field it includes. So if any instruction contain plus symbol, then that instruction we are considering it as format 4 instruction. If the any instruction is not format 1, format 2 or format 4, then by default we are considering that instruction as format 3 instruction. Before calculating location counter value, First, we should know what are the assembler direct. So, there are six different basic assembler directive. First one is start. Start specifies name and starting address for the program. For example, if I have any instruction called sum start 0, where start is an assembler directive, it, we have used it. And along with that start, we have used some name called as sum and in operand field, we have value called c. So that means sum is a program name and zero is starting address of that program. Next, we have end. End indicate end of the source program. And optionally, we can specify the first executable instruction in the program. We can just write end or we can write it end first. End first indicates first is an executable instruction. First executable instruction. Next we have byte. Byte generates either character or hexadecimal constant. So this occupy as many byte as needed to represent the constant. For example, if I take any label, byte, assembler directive, and then if I mention x and then 1, 2, 3, 4 as a value, then I have to, I am generating a constant, hexadecimal constant that is 1, 2, 3, 4. Same way we have another instruction, label, byte, c, a, b, c, that indicates we are generating a character constant A, B, C, D. Next, word. Word generate one word integer constant. Where we have zero, word, zero. Zero is a label, word is a similar directive and some operand value. This generate one word integer constant. Reserve byte. Reserve byte indicate number of bytes for the data area. If I write it buffer reserve byte 4096, then 
we are reserving 4096 byte for buffer same way we have reserved word we are reserving indicate number of the words for the data area reserve word so here if i write it one that means one word we are going to reserve it count reserve word one one word we are going to reserve in the data so based on these assembler directive we can calculate the location counter for start and end there is no location counter value it will not take any memory location but for byte length we have to calculate it is based on whether it is hexadecimal or character so if it is a hexadecimal constant i have for to calculate the length i have to count number of digits and then you divide that number number of digit by 2 So then you will get it. What is the length of this hexadecimal constant? This is why because one will we can store it in four bits, two we can store it in four bits. So combining one and two we can store it in eight bit. So to calculate the length, first we will count the number of digit and then we will divide by two. Same way to calculate the uh, length for the character constant, we have we have to count it number of character each character we are storing it in a ascii value ascii value anyways we takes 8 bit so 11 by 4 11 character so length you can calculate it as number of character and for word if any instruction contains word then always length is equal to 3 because one word integer constant one word indicates it is 3 byte reserve byte so reserve byte indicates you have to check it first what is the operand value and that value you have to convert into hexa hexadecimal value then you will get to know what is the length of this particular instruction 4096 byte we are going to reserve it so when you are calculating the calculating the location counter value these many byte you have to reserve it location counter value is always hexadecimal value so convert this value into hexadecimal and then you can add it to location counter same with reserve word so reserve when it comes for reserve word so that many word you are going to reserve it. that means 3 bytes so one reserve word means 1 into 3 so whatever the operand value you are going to give so that you have to multiply with 3 then some result you will get so that you have to convert into hexadecimal so this conversion value i am considering it as length of this particular instruction so to calculate the location counter value first we need to identify what is length of each instruction then we have to add it with the starting address to get to know what is the location counter value so first we'll identify length of each instruction so first is sum start 0 that is a assembler directive so there is no length for this particular instruction next is first clear x x is a operand and which is a register single operand is used in the instruction and which is a register that means this instruction is format two instruction so length is two byte next is lda hash 0 so this there is a operand in this instruction so that means it is not format one and i have Hash zero, which is not a register, so it is not format two, and there is no plus symbol prefixed with LDA, so that indicates so this instruction is format three instruction. Next is plus LDB hash total. Plus is there in the instruction that indicates this is format four instruction. Next is Base assembler directive. 
this is assembler directive so there is no length for this particular instruction add table comma x here we have two operands where one operand is a label another operand is a register if i have operand both the operands are registered then it will be format two instruction but here one operand is a label other operand is registered so it is format three instruction tix count again this is format three instruction jlt loop format three length is three sta total format three length is three STCH buffer comma x one only one operand is a registered other operand is a label so it is format three next byte x zero nine so it is generating hexadecimal constant so how many number of digits we have here two was zero and nine so there are two digits so two divided by two that means it takes one byte length is one next reserve word one count reserve word one we are reserving one word that means we have to multiply with three one into three we are getting value as three so that i have to convert into hexadecimal we are getting value as three itself next is table reserve word 2000 so 2000 words we are going to reserve it so 2000 multiplication 3 will get it 6000 6000 when we convert into hexadecimal we are getting value as 1770 so length of the this particular instruction in hexadecimal is 177 next total reserve word 1 1 into 3 3 converted value into hexadecimal it is again 3 Next buffer reserve byte 4096. 4096 bytes we are reserving it. So no need to multiply it, directly convert into hexadecimal. We are getting 1000, 1000 in terms of hexadecimal. So we have calculated length of all the instruction and there is no length of reserve for end. After computing length of the each instruction, then we can calculate location counter value for each instruction. First, we have the instruction called sum start zero. This indicate that we are starting our program with zero 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 location. So this is zero is a starting address. So zero zero zero. Zero, we have to write it for the next instruction that is first executable instruction then length of this instruction is 2 so I have to add it 0 0 0 with 2 I will get it 0 0 2 so this is address of next instruction length of the third instruction that is LDA hash 0 is 3 so we have to add 0002 plus 3, I'll get answer as 005. Same way I have to repeat it for all the instruction. So first identify what is address of that instruction, add it with the length of that instruction to get to know what is next instruction address. 0005 plus 4, I'll get it 009. There is no length for base, so we are writing same value for the next instruction. 009 plus 3, we are getting answer as 00C. Next, 00C plus 3, we are getting it as 000F. F plus 3, I will get answer as 0012. 12 plus 3 is 15. 15 plus 3 is 18, 18 plus 1 is 19, 19 plus 3 is 1C and 1C plus 1770, we are getting it answered as 178C. 
178C plus 3, 178F. 178F plus 1000. We are getting answer as 278F. So, we have calculated the location counter based on length of the instruction. Before calculating the object code, most of the instruction are of format 3 or format 4 instruction. So, this always use this particular format opcode n i x b p e either displacement or address displacement for format 3 and address for format 4. So, first we will understand what are these bits and how to set these bits to compute object code. So, n i x b p e indicates n is indirect i immediate x index p indicates base p indicates program counter e indicate extend so if i am using indirect addressing mode that means if any instruction has et and then operand field which is mentioned in the instruction then we have to set n bit as 1 and i bit as 0 if any instruction contains hash and then operand value, then it is immediate addressing. Then I have to set it n equal to 0 and i equal to 1. And if any instruction contains operand, comma, x, that indicates it is index addressing mode is used. So then I have to set x equal to x. To calculate the displacement, sometimes we can use it base relative addressing mode or PC relative addressing mode. So, if we are using base relative, then B value I have to set it 1 and P value 0. PC, value, PC relative B equal to 0 and P equal to 1. In direct addressing mode, that means in case of format 4, both B and P value equal to 0. And extended E value equal to 0 for format 3 and E value equal to 1 for format 4 instruction. So now when to use base and when to use PC relative so that we have to check it. So always choose PC relative first by default if the displacement is within 12 bits. If computer displacement cannot fit into 12 bit, then PC relative does not work. Then you have to use base relative. 